Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to make a very brief intervention in support of the motion to exempt import of certain items in barrels. And there are two periods that have been cited in the motion, from the 1st of November to the 29th of February, and that applies to barrels that are shipped by loved ones overseas to their counterparts in St. Lucia. And the other part of the motion, Mr. Speaker, speaks specifically to members of parliament who are desirous of importing toys, food items, and care products for distribution and use in their respective constituencies. And that period is from the 1st of November to the 31st of, of January. Mr. Speaker, I believe that this is progressive, notwithstanding that it has been in the making for some time. And when the Prime Minister presented, he did allude to the fact that this was the brainchild of his predecessor, Labour Party Prime Minister and member for Viewfort South. <clears throat> but Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me to express support for the motion and not reference the misguided, desperate, and incoherent presentation that came from the former Prime Minister and Minister um, and member for Mikud South. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, what we saw here this morning was a brilliant exhibition of showmanship, a flawless display of parliamentary hypocrisy. And we saw a portrait of political desperation. And for those persons who are in the chamber for the first time and who would never have seen him before in this chamber, you would believe that here is a man who means well. Here is a man with policy. But this is the same individual today, hypocritically, posturing as a champion of poor people. Today he has ascribed to himself the title of advocate of poor people. But what did he do when he was a prime minister, Mr. Speaker? Where he was in a position to formulate policies that would have enabled poor people to rise out of poverty and improve their lot. Mr. Speaker, he does not like poor people. And history is replete with examples of things he did when he was prime minister, things that were at variance with policies that he found in government that were meant to improve the situation of poor people. Mr. Speaker, on Mother's Day, when poor people who could not find employment in the machinery of government decided to resort to trades as vendors to sell on the streets of Castries and in the market on Mother's Day, single mothers whose trays were packed on the sidewalk, Mr. Speaker, under his prime ministerial watch, he sent the authorities to collect the trays and to dump them in a place where they were not accessible by single mothers. And today the same hypocrite stands here and wants to speak on behalf of poor people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in recognition of the fact that poor people they will, be able, they will not be able to build or construct homes to the tune of two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars but they can sacrifice, they can save and buy a few sheets of paper and knock it up and have shelter and comfort for themselves and their children. Notwithstanding the amenities may not be the greatest, but there's a pride that lives or resides in those plywood structures. And we know on many occasions, Mr. Speaker, when we listen to the news, you hear of a house having been destroyed by fire and they didn't have insurance. Some of them had not even finished the small loans, pay off the small loans for the homes that they had constructed. And in his wisdom, the former prime minister and member for Beaufort South, he introduced as a line item in the budget, the distress fund. So that those persons, when their houses were destroyed, they would have gotten a lifeline compliments the government. As a line item, the distress fund under the member for Mikud South was withdrawn from the budget, Mr. Speaker. But today, who comes here and postures as an advocate of poor people? Mr. Member Speaker, for Denry South, for Denry North, just hold. Um, Member um, Member point of order again, and the member from Denry, is Ms. Denry, South, Denry North is misleading the House. We did not withdraw the fund. 
the fund is a, a, a humongous fund, and we broaden the amount of money that we spend. So if the member going to go in, and, and you're in government, so you can go and check the facts for yourself. We were spending upwards of six million dollars a year on helping people with medical issues, housing issues, and distress. And all the facts are there for them to Mr. Speaker. That's where it came from. Mr. Speaker, I will repeat verbatim what I said. I said as a line item in the budget, the distress fund disappeared. And I challenged the member from Mikud South to take copies of the estimates during the period he was Prime Minister and show me a line item in it where it says this dress fund. That is what I said, Mr. Speaker. It disappeared. But today, Mr. Speaker, he comes and he postures as a champion of the poor. Mr. Speaker, we as an administration between 2011 and 2016, we recognized that there was a need for the children of St. Lucia to have been online and under the member for Viewfort South again as Prime Minister, we introduced the One Laptop Per Child program. Upon entry into government, under his watch, this self-proclaimed champion of the poor, he stopped the One Laptop Per Child program. And when, Mr. Speaker, the pressure began to mount, and I know you were there in the cabinet at the time, they quickly tried to bring in a program that they believe would have sufficed. Mr. Speaker, this champion of the poor, a self-proclaimed champion of the poor, when he is not well, or members of his family are faced with certain medical challenges, he has the means to be able to fly them overseas. Upon entering this um, um, government as Prime Minister, he found that a hospital that had been damaged by fire was being repaired. Mr. Speaker, that started during the reign of the member for Castries North. And after the United Workers' Party was voted out of office and the St. Lucia Labour Party entered in 2011, the member for Viewfort South, former Prime Minister, he continued with the plans he met there to give the people of the South a hospital. But came, then came in 2016 the member for Mikud South, self-proclaimed champion of the poor. What did he do? He stopped construction on the hospital, not for two days or two weeks, you know, for three years. And whilst construction on the hospital had halted, Mr. Speaker, less than 100 yards away, he was busy facilitating construction of facilities for horses to come and gallop. Yeah. You did not remember at the time that the poor people on whose behalf you want to speak today needed healthcare facilities when you were busy preparing for horses? But you come and you posture here today as if you are a champion of the poor. That is the hypocrisy that characterizes his politics, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you what he did. This champion of the poor, let me tell you what he did, Mr. Speaker. When he came into government, Mr. Speaker, he found a program in government known as the Constituency Development Program, the CDP. And when the CDP was established as a program in government, Every single one of the 17 members of parliament would have received resources to execute projects in their constituencies, whether you were opposition or in government. He came in, Mr. Speaker, and he found the program entrenched. What did he do? There were six of us in opposition, and we had poor people in our constituencies, as we still do today, who used to come knocking at our constituency doors asking for help with basic things, Mr. Speaker. But as a deliberate policy ploy from him, you know what he did? He starved us of resources. And after the five years were up for elections, he dragged us into a six year. And for six years, he did not give a single project to anybody in opposition to help the poor in their constituencies. But today, out of convenience, he stands here and wants to lecture us about poor people. Mr. Speaker, there is a shamelessness that characterizes the politics of, of this particular member, and he needs to stop. So don't come here and posture as a, 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 an advocate of poor people. You don't like poor people. All he did prior to election was to take selfies and photos with poor people so it can resonate on social media. You don't like poor people. You don't dump the trays of poor people and come here today and pretend you're for poor people. You don't starve opposition parliamentarians of resources to help poor people. And as it is convenient, I know what it's like to be in opposition, you know. 
I start across there, and you're just halfway through the turn, and you have more days in opposition to come. So don't come and bamboos people as if you're a champion of the poor. Mr. Speaker, I believe this intervention by the Prime Minister is progressive, it is necessary. And for constituents like those in Denry North that I've had the pleasure of representing after three general elections, I know, Mr. Speaker, this will touch lives because they rely heavily on remittances throughout the year. And when, Mr. Speaker, when in December, to help spread the Christmas, Christmas cheer, they look forward to receiving barrels and other items from overseas. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to get this out Mr. Speaker, I'm going to play the audio that I'm going to see the match Premier Minister of Japan, Kote, Ika, et courage moun pou vwe barrel de sun et puis commission had et puis l'autre bagay bay fam yo en saison Noël. Tout les années cette ici en tradition ko moun ka joine barrel n'importe le an l'année. Mais nous tout ça Mr Speaker, les ka vini pli pour pour Noël, c'est les nous ka un pli barrel am ka sorti l'autre pays. Nous le pour l'occasion pour aussi di Jean cette ici that we have to use the concession responsibly. And as the Prime Minister would have indicated in present, present, it, during his presentation of the motion, let us ensure that all the items in the barrels are items that do not contravene the laws of St. Lucia. Leave the illegal items out. There should be no guns, no weapons in those barrels, Mr. Speaker. The explanation is clear. It is simple in terms of what we expect in those barrels. And so I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I unequivocally support this particular intervention on behalf of the government. And I need to say to those of you in the chamber, notwithstanding what you would have heard, do your research and you will know who the real champions of poor people are in this country. You will know which government has made it possible for poor people who cannot even access health care. We know who, Mr. Speaker, has made it law in this country for them not to pay the ambulance fees. We know which government is responsible for that. So don't come here today and think that you can speak on behalf of poor people and that will be your path to victory. Poor people are not as stupid as you think, you know. <laughs> poor people are more discerning than you believe. I'm from a poor family, and several of us are. So be careful, Mr. Speaker, with who wants to come here and lecture us on poverty. And when they were given an opportunity, a very solid mandate, to come and stand up for poor people, almost every policy initiative that they, Mr. Speaker, put forward in this country was inimical to the plight of poor people, the well-being of poor people. And today, Mr. Speaker, I want to support, as I said, on it vocally, this motion by the Prime Minister to waive certain duties on barrels to help spread the Christmas chair and to give our people, Mr. Speaker, a Merry Christmas and a prosperous start to the ensuing year.